Today we're going to be bringing the channel back to its roots. We're going to be digging out some classic mold bug from the unqualified reservations days. Moldbug was so prolific and so much was written so long ago, I often forget that people don't have all the context for the topics that we are discussing. Yarvin wrote so many essays and they are so poorly organized that if a video has not been specifically made on a topic, most people might not even be aware that a concept exists and appears repeatedly throughout his work. So in this video, we're going to explore one of Yarvin's most important concepts, the idea that the sovereign is he who selects the null hypothesis. The political theorist Carl Schmitt famously said that the sovereign is he who decides on the exception. And while Moldbug agrees with Schmitt, he believes that the saying needs to be updated for our current situation. Moldbug says, quote, Carl Schmidt said that the sovereign is he who decides the exception. While this is true, Carl Schmidt lived in saner times. In the 30s and 40s, the sovereign had a pretty simple way of deciding the exception. He made his decision and loaded it into his gun. Propaganda existed, true, but it was remarkably crude. Really, the main thing was the gun. Sensible, traditional, effective. Nobody makes decisions anymore, at least not personal decisions, at least not in the public sector. And guns are almost obsolete. You don't need a gun to herd sheep, much less swine. All you need is a story and slop for the swine. Who is the sovereign? Not a who, but a what. The sovereign is the story. Of course, there is no story without a storyteller. There are a lot of storytellers, professionals even. They make a good living, and they're all quite replaceable. I really have great sympathy for the professional. In a bureaucratic oligarchy like ours, the professional both rules and is ruled. At the top, there is no one on top of him. Yet he cannot change his mind. He would simply be replaced. There are always younger, more eager professionals. Sovereignty is conserved. It is always humans who rule. And yet, it seems there is no one who rules. Who gets to put his hand on the wheel? He can stand there and look like the captain. Chicks dig it, and yes sir, it sure does pay. When the sovereign is the story, I claim the sovereign is he who selects the null hypothesis. What is the null hypothesis? Have you ever seen the phrase, no evidence for that? For instance, there is no evidence that voter fraud has significant impact on American elections. Like it or not, established religion is an essential attribute of sovereignty. Unless you're a crazy person, you believe what the sovereign, personal or institutional, orders you to believe. Obviously, there is a conflict here, or at least a potential conflict, because even a normal, non-crazy person will experience difficulty in believing his own eyes, which is fine. Sovereigns though asymptotically infallible, err. They change their mind, or at least have to be thought capable of it. You can change your mind too. Maybe you're just the first. However, the null hypothesis is what the sovereign orders you to believe, at least until evidence, which could promptly be brought to your master's attention, convinces you otherwise. Since the sovereign also sets the bar for how much evidence it takes to convince you otherwise, he can order you to believe in pretty much anything short of outright arithmetic violations. All he has to do is set the null hypothesis to his desired outcome, then set the burden of proof impossibly high. End quote. Moldbug's assertion that the story is the key to sovereignty is what's really important here. The idea that the person who sets the null hypothesis, the default story, has the ability to tell you not only what you should believe automatically, but also has the ability to set the standard by which that story would even be proven false in the first place. In Moldbug's mind, the story is dictated, it is shaped by the cathedral, the decentralized consensus-making apparatus of universities, news media, entertainment, and unelected government bureaucracies that help to define our cultural reality. This is why he suggests that while someone is always in power, someone's hand is always on the wheel... They are never entirely in control. They are themselves shaped and influenced by the story. And while minor changes to the story are possible, they can never really go off script. 
because they are perfectly aware that there are thousands and thousands of young and hungry priests of the cathedral always ready to devour them and take their place. This is one of the reasons that Yarvin says Cthulhu always swims to the left, because that's always the direction in which to steer the narrative in order to take power. It is the constant internal power struggle among the elite class, one in which more fervent dedication to progressivism is always the dominant signaling device which ensures that the story maintains its constant leftward direction. And this ability to set the null hypothesis, the default story, and the rules by which it would be disproven is how the cathedral wins its battles. We have been trained to distrust direct, visible, monarchical power. Instead, we prefer to think of ourselves as free men, governed only by a neutral process established on reason and logic. But of course, there is no such thing as governance by a neutral process. Someone or something is always dictating the rules of the process. In fact, this is where the power of the cathedral lies. In manipulating the procedural outcomes in which we place all our faith. We have been taught to trust dispersed power, oligarchical power, And so it rarely occurs to us that we should question the nature of the procedure used to determine our outcomes. But recently we have seen this start to come apart. The resilience of the cathedral was always its inability to obfuscate its power. The willingness to be patient and allow slow and subtle manipulation to inevitably yield the desired results. Instead, the propaganda is omnipresent and almost completely unhinged. They're using all the same tools of manipulation, but in an effort to shift society on a dime, instead of over the long time frames that they usually were able to wait for victories. Many different people have speculated over whether this is a signal of fear or of confidence. But either way, one thing is for sure. The cathedral will not be returning to subtle, slow manipulation. And only time will tell if this means the beginning of the end for the cathedral, or if it's only the end of the beginning. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and click like. If you haven't subscribed yet, now is a great time to do so. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter or you'd like to support my work on Subscribestar, like the amazing people whose names are currently being displayed on screen, you can follow the links that are below the video in the description. That's also where you'll find links to my merch store and to my Rumble and Odyssey channels if you'd like to subscribe there. Thanks for watching, guys, and as always, I'll talk to you next time.